and about the things. Um, I wanted to actually just open it with, yeah, let me do the share if I can. We should say welcome to the Docs Working Group. Whoa, whoa, that is right. Welcome, welcome to the Docs Working Group. We are going to be talking about all things docs. And in this case, uh, we're gonna be starting with a, some chatting about docs strategy because Salt Project is quite a large, large community of, of uh, distributed projects, especially with the advent of plugin oriented programming and pop projects on GitLab. What we are going to do is talk about how do we unify these doc sets that are following the docs code approach embedded within all of these projects. They are isolated, they are published, they are unpublished. They don't exist, we want them to exist. So how do we do this? How do we address such a problem? Well, friends, I'm here to talk about that. And uh, I didn't even start sharing my screen. So why don't I do that? I'm gonna just share a code editor, you know, best way to do that. Uh, taking these markdown notes, which will be posted to the docs hub. And uh, what is it that I'm talking about? Well, <laughs> we have documentation that exists on GitLab. We have uh, inside of projects and they're either published Either they're not published or they're published to GitLab pages um, that then are localized and specific to that repo. Or we have docs that are on docs.cellproject.io. Or we have docs that are on read the docs.io. Uh, so it could be anywhere or nowhere. And in this case, um, I've been talking to some people on open source projects that VMware also assists with. Uh, one. Uh, Jonas Rosland, who um, he's a community manager, to, uh, an open source community manager working at VMware. And they have uh, some templates that I would like to reference as a way to, for one, replace our Acrolamid based docs portal. So um, let me just hop around here. Uh, if I can get... Uh, well, hold on. Where the heck is my, or the docs that I want? So we have, this is our main portal. This is something that exists in a private repository of ours, and it is built with a Python 2 based static site generator called Acrylamid. Acrylamid today might be further along, but we decided at some point to use uh, and keep using a, a very old version of it. And wait, 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 wait. We've got to go back to the theme that we were doing. Before. Sorry, go With ahead. The boys. We've got to go back to doing the theme we were doing. Oh, I see. Before. To uh, <laughs> my presenter, <laughs> if I can my do presenter it without voice. <laughs> I could probably do it the entire meeting. Um, <laughs> you don't have to though. I have a feeling people, I, I have a feeling after a while, people will be like, please stop. Please stop. I, I did start to wonder if you have a second job as a narrator, but yeah. Oh, I, I could, I could narrate some audio books. I gotta, I should start doing that. I could, I can narrate the documentation. <laughs> okay. That's it. So now every time that we come, I'm selecting Derek's theme. voice for my assistant on uh, Google now. <laughs> I could be, I could be like a GPS assistant. That's right. <laughs> Derek's voice brought to you. Uh, the parody of the parody of the Shwenny Balls skit. <laughs> oh. No, oh, we don't have to use that voice, but it was funny when you started. <laughs> <laughs> Just a slight tangent from what we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Just a few tangents, but whatever, you know? But we wanna get people excited and into docs and really understanding the anatomy of soul. Okay, so uh, again, this is that page that we generate. Um, see how we have some cool broken images, you know? There used to be a way these were hosted in the old salt 
the salt days that they're just not anymore. Uh, I don't know how often people even look at this page, to be quite honest. I have a feeling most people don't like landing here first. They're trying to get to the salt docks. And from here, it's hard to even get there. You're kind of like, um, do I go here? Wait, what? And, and, then, and then you have to just go to the table of contents. And then people maybe can start to figure out what they want to do. Or they go to all salt modules and find the module that they're looking for. So um, uh, I wanted to actually just get us to a point where we could have this whole thing replaced because it's also old salt stack branding with the uh, with a Hugo based template that is just a landing page for all of our separate doc sets because we have the salt user guide that's underway. We want to get that into the doc salt project site. We have the salt install guide that is also underway. We want to get that again onto the DocSalt salt project. We want to get all of the pop projects that are underneath um, that salt project is a maintainer of on GitLab. We want to have their docs generated and made available within the um, directory structure of docs.saltproject.io. Because right now they're all over the place again, and it's incredibly hard to search. Which brings me to also to this search bar. I have a strong feeling most, well, from anecdotal evidence of lots of conversations with people in the community, people avoid using the Google custom search engine that we use. That includes ads and all sorts of other fun problems. And either just use a direct Google search um, where they just target the site or duck, duck, go. <laughs> And where they just say site docs.saltproject.io thing I'm looking for to get there. Because this is highly inefficient and, and we actually have to, believe it or not, do lots of stuff to manage this. <laughs> there are extra steps we have to do with every release where we have to go into a Google custom search engine configuration portal and do a bunch of settings changes only for people to not care. So. I want to remove that off our plate. It's previously been SREs, but guess what? I'm becoming an SRE, so it's my problem now. So I don't want it to be my problem either. And so the idea is let's destroy the usage of it and replace it with Algolia. Now, Algolia is a uh, cool search engine um, thing used by open source projects, actually, open source and non-open source projects, but they have a special, um, they have like a, a special one that is for open source. Yeah, Algolia for open source. And uh, the idea is that it comes with a whole lot of things right out of the box and likely would support everything we want. And honestly, whatever it provides would be better than what we currently have. So, what would it allow us to do? The thing that it would actually allow us to do is that when you would use something like a central search bar, you could then use checkboxes that allow you to target and filter your searches across doc sets. So imagine if you're like, I want to search across all item plugins only, or I want to search the salt docs only, or I want to search all of it. Um, you can have all that stuff return and um, in a much better search experience. And uh, that's specific to how Algolia has indexed and, and, and done everything, which we could also go in and further categorize if we want to. That would be huge. And then what we can do is there's a way in Sphinx that you can replace the search bar with something like our Algolia search bar. Now, what this would mean is that when someone, if they landed on a particular doc set, so if let's say, what do we have? Um, wow, we have salt stack, GitLab, salt user guide. So this right now is only on GitLab pages. There's the search that's only local to this repository. That makes sense because that's all there is here right now. But the goal would be that this little search bar then could be replaced with an Algolia search bar. So that regardless of where you land in the salt docs, 
be it in a pop project docs like pop book or pop or item or salt user guide, the goal would be, can you jump to a different doc set through a search if you wanted to from here? Because if it's all going to be on docs.saltproject.io and we can get all of it in, this would allow for a unified search experience without us having, having to host some custom elastic search or some other special search tool and without it having to just be a Google custom search engine that's not good is that this would just be way better. And I wanted to hear feedback and thoughts from people if that other people are feeling the same way that, yeah, I wish that existed now and I want that to exist now. Why aren't you doing it, Derek? I wanna hear that kind of stuff because um, when I start to play around with this, I'm, I want to then do this A-B testing, which I think I've talked about previously, but I'm finally now pushing toward management, the idea of, hey, I want to get this as a priority so I could actually dedicate time toward it. So now that I spewed a lot of words, it is now, uh, um, I'd like to hear some feedback before I jump around and maybe look at some other stuff in the meeting notes. So uh, yeah, let me actually see who's all here. All right. Uh, anyone who was following what I was saying, um, what do you think? What does this does this type of thing sound like a way to better the overall user experience and developer experience for users of Salt project projects? I'm a huge fan. In terms of the search, I'm a huge fan of getting rid of the current search and implementing something like Alcolia because it's it's a disaster. Yes. And, I, and I actually agree with you on all of the points regarding the lay, like with regards to the layout of the landing page, because it's like, I just want to get to the, the reference and I have to go through three clicks to get there. Yes. Yeah. It's not fun. <laughs> I mean, I, I you really worked hard to keep that right at the maximum that you would stay interested. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, on the flip side, it's improved by Google Foo because I'm like, okay, so that's an execution module or is that a state module? And what was that module called? So I'll be like, uh, salt dot uh, net acl dot uh, sorry salt dot state dot net acl. That should get me to the right page. <laughs> well, I'm glad we taught you how to be a better user of Google, Gary. <laughs> Well, that's actually a really interesting thing. I was talking about this briefly earlier and we've talked about it before. And I think it would be a good thing for us to, to in a small group setting like this working group to even go over. And I would love the opinions of people here is that the table of contents doesn't make sense sometimes. There's some things that are under the table of contents on the headers that I'm like, so why is that there? I mean, I would never, I just would never look for it there. And I think that could be improved. And something that we wanted to do is like a card sorting exercise where we just take cards and we sort them really quickly and we see where the table of contents could land. Um, and uh, I think that that also would really help improve the navigation of the documentation, right? Yeah. So like there's the, like when you land on the documentation, uh, it starts with that fundamentals page, right? And I agree with the goal that that was trying to accomplish. Uh, you need to start out with an understanding of like, these are the components of salt, right? And then these are like, and then you need to get to like, this is the core of salt. Here's where to start, right? Like, here's a map, you are here. Now follow this path. Hey, you wanna learn more? Follow these other paths, right? Because like you wanna find the developer content like the developer content is where you actually find this is how salt works under the sheets, you know? Um, and actually it turns out that's really important to know when you're trying to scale salt. <laughs> so uh, it's not really just intended for developers kind of stuff. So yeah, really, I don't see it as just like, um, uh, just uh, reworking the table of contents. Like we really need to shift in the actual content available. Oh yeah, yeah. Talked, that's just one thing. Yeah, we talked do. about the idea, but we so we've when we've talked about the contributing guide actually, um, too, which I, I guess is kind of an extra P component of that, is that we were thinking that it's almost like 
when you first come to salt docks themselves, it's almost like there should there needs to be a sort of choose your own adventure starting place because are you using salt? Are you developing salt? Are you wanting to look at and do you need to know the fundamentals of these kind of things? It's it's also part of why we're pulling out a lot of docs from salt into the salt user guide because um, when it comes to reference modules, referencing the modules, someone who's just learning how to use salt, hey, I want to learn what, how salt works. And then we go, go look at the reference modules. That, that doesn't help them. <laughs> but then if they had that starting point of going, how does salt even function? And now that you're like understanding how it's working and what you can do with it, now you can go look at the reference modules. And the other piece is that the versioning problem, which we're still experiencing right now, is everyone who's contributing to docs, they keep maybe accidentally looking at an old version of the contributing docs because we currently version um, docs that shouldn't be versioned alongside the version of salt. So someone's looking at version 3000 docs and they're like, huh, I want to know, know how to test this. And then they'll go look at the test docs that are like very outdated um, when they really should be looking at the latest version of how do you test salt? How do you develop salt? How do you set up your debt, your environment locally. And um, that's all this stuff that we're also pulling out that if we did something like a table of contents reorganization of things, we'd also be wanting to flag what is here that shouldn't be and that should be in the salt user guide. What is here that shouldn't be and should be in the salt install guide because we're also now creating a new install guide that's combining the installation documentation you see at repo.saltproject.io and the installation documentation you see in the salt docs, which is in a different sub index, we're trying to combine those and update them and place them into one place. That's again, not pinned to just what you see on one side and the other. And so there's a whole lot of moving parts. Uh, and that's just specifically salt. That's not even looking at the, hey, let's, let's unify the ability to search across even all pop projects. But and Sage was mentioning the idea that these sound like the table of contents card sorting type thing. That sounds like an excellent docs jam. Because if we could get people all into place and go, this is how this, this is what this is about and why we're doing it. And we want to make this like as sane, as, as um, sensible, as, as, as easy to navigate as possible when looking at it from, from landing on the site. And then for people to go, this seems to make sense being here. For example, we have, we have like five different test. We have like five different documents about testing with testing salt. You have like one doc over here that says writing unit tests. You have one doc over here. I think that says integration tests. You have one doc over here that says salt pie test. And then you have another one over here that says salt tutorial salt pie test. And I, and it's, it's which ones should you look at? Which ones are outdated? Why aren't they just under one tree that says tests and then have the, you know, testing with salt? Like, and so things like that appear a lot in the docs. Contributing guide is probably another one. I mean, we, we've, we've improved it, but only in the current master branch when you go and look at that and maybe the latest now with the recent release. But um, yeah, those are good points is uh, when, you, when it says fundamentals, okay, the other, Okay, I didn't mention this, but I actually want to deprecate the getting started guide. Um, when you're here, hey, I want to learn a tutorial. Now I'm somewhere entirely different. <laughs> I'm not in the salt docs. I'm not in on the main. This is actually a completely different repo for this section. Um, and it's you know, I also don't know when, I think this was maybe last reviewed four years ago or six years ago. So it's been a long time. And this is just something entirely different. And it, this is, again, I believe it's using maybe Pandoc with like some HTML templates or something, uh, maybe Acrylamid. And this, the salt user guide is going to ultimately replace because everything that's been going into the salt user guide due to the work from uh, Alan Kugler and then everyone else after that, like Gary and um, Jim, who have been doing reviews of it, this is going to be, I want to ax this 
completely. So we're not having to support it. And then people can just go to the SALT user guide to understand the fundamentals. Because um, you're right, the fundamentals are important for people learning SALT. And, and it addresses a different need than simply the execution modules that someone looks at. I'm going to put some of that in the notes. So it looks like that repo was last updated mm -hmm. two years ago, four years ago, a long time. Yeah, from what you're seeing on there. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a private repo too, right? Or maybe? Uh, no, this one's open. Oh, okay. See, I didn't even know that. I, I rarely have looked at that repo. Um, as I'm talking about using a, because the other thing is we talked, the other idea for Docs Jam previously, we talked about, I have that huge epic issue, that ridiculously large issue that I need to, I've created a template to open issues with, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to script and cut like a hundred and hundred issues out. And uh, <laughs> uh, I haven't done it. And I don't know how viable that would be as a docs jam. Um, maybe it uh, I felt, I kept thinking it would be a good one because I don't know how else we're going to approach so many issues that, are, that might just sit there. And it's really needed. All those options, all those undocumented options in the salt minion and master configs. Um, yeah, so that's another thing to think about too, I suppose, when talking about docs jam, but maybe, maybe we'll have two docs jams. So. We'll probably have a few more than just one. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> also something that I said, I'll just interject this here too. I said within the open hour and um, I've said it in a couple other meetings I've been in today, but I'll, I'll say it again here, that we are looking to do um, a lot more with the project boards and, and work to be done so that it could be smaller pieces of work that could be done asynchronously as well. This group is um, got more work than some of the other working groups that are a little more focused and, and smaller, I guess, in scope. And so I think that we need all of the above. You know, we need docs jams and docs clinics and um, working groups that meet often, and we need uh, a work uh, a project board that could be worked asynchronously. Yeah, no, I, I was actually that was the point I was going to raise. I mean, it's fantastic that we have this kind of vision for things, but I think we need like really tiny bite-sized projects because you know yes. I've been like. I've been hitting on like documentation in the main salt documentation, but I haven't done a ton with the salt user guide. I've just been cleaning up stuff here and there. And, but I think, you know, we need some really, really tight focus things that, you know, things mm -hmm. like me and Jim can work on. Like maybe it's getting, you know, maybe it's getting bail, uh, you know, done on the salt user guide. Maybe it's, you know, like maybe the, the slightly larger project is like, let's finish off the salt user guide before we start, you know, implementing Algolia or, you know, or, or I mean, or it could be, you know, Derek's working on kind of the larger stuff and, and, you know, the, the, you know, contributors are working on the small pieces. So at least we, we don't start 10 things and finish none of them. Um. <laughs> yeah. And I, cause there are even uh, merge requests that Jim has opened that are tech, that are tech writer uh, edits and reviews of, the documentation in the salt user guide that are still awaiting review from me <laughs> that I need to go through and just like, I just need to tackle them and do them. Um, and Lisa merge went for me today. So, <laughs> Oh, sweet. So, you know, Elisa and Elisa now and then gets time, but um, you know, Elisa now being on the more VMware internal and enterprise product documentation time time and, and availability for it is a bit of a different, is harder for her too. And so I'm glad she got to take a look, but I really needed to take a look at those too. 
And I think to what Sage was saying, having a project board, what's hard, right, is we have salt install guide, salt user guide, the salt repo itself. I'm also right now looking at all the docs across the pop ecosystem. So what this means is I have issues across tons of repos and I have things I'm trying to focus on and juggle and, and, and somehow keep track of. And it's really difficult when you have it across so many different, you have it across two different hosting platforms, GitHub and GitLab. And then you have, have issues across multiple repos. And so it's a, it is a, It's, it's hard to get the high, I guess, the high level view of what's priority, what's the one I'm doing first, and how do I organize this one to understand how we reach that inevitable, the, I mean, the eventual end goals. And um, starting with things like the SALT user guide. Like I wanna get the SALT user guide published to doc.saltproject.io because I still have people who reach out and go, dude, I just saw this. How come I didn't know about this? This is awesome. Um, but that's because it's on a GitLab pages over here, you know, so. Yeah. So one of the things that I, I just posted in the chat is the, there is a project board that's out there that's just docs um, tickets. And something that I think that this group could do, um, and maybe we just need to meet about it, Derek, and, the, and then set this group up to do it, is to kind of triage some of this stuff to say, what's the, what's the highest priority or what's going to give us the most value? And maybe even um, something that we did with the install guide that I really liked was kind of a, a, a level of effort. Like this is really small or this is really you know big or, or whatever. And so that you could pick things up easily. And I think that's the next step in this project board that we need to do. Yeah, well, and, um, I, and I think that's what the salt, I think that's what this working group, the next working group meeting should be purely about, let's look at our tasks, what's remaining, uh, who's taking what, who wants to do what and and what are blockers people might have because then we can get more into a task oriented approach because i think the past few working groups and even the last clinic i did probably i've been i've been probably too focused on on hey let's figure out where we're going first which i i mean that's necessary to know then mm -hmm. where where should we start and uh, but it's been good like jim for example has been looking at at veil and um, something that's going to be very useful in our tool sets in general across docs and that we want to see how can we integrate that and make use of it in, in the SALT user guide, probably as simply some steps inside of the contributing guide and, and, and it to be an augmentation to local development of docs. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think if we have the future, the next one's being, let's look at the project board and, and let's look at the SALT user guide repo issues and merge requests, you know, these kind of things. What do people think about that? Since it sounds like we have an idea of the goal we want to achieve, but we now need to start working on the pieces um, where people are just doing what they can in their contributions as we make it down that road. Yeah, I mean, I think I think if we can break out a couple, you know, at least a few tasks or like, you know, maybe two, three, four hours, you know, something someone can do in, in an evening and then maybe a few longer term tasks um, and, and at least and that, like, I think, I mean, I think the salt user guides, uh, given the feedback uh, that you've gotten, you know, about how great it is, I think it's the logical place to start to kind of finish that off and get that cleaned off and if yeah if we can have you know break it into bite-sized tasks where you know if you have an evening you're free you can work on it you can just bang something quick off like not all the tasks are going to be that easy obviously but um at least if we have them enumerated and we can do it's very targeted rather than just kind of having this bit you know you know we're kind of we're working on it you know just you know pick at it but there's not necessarily clear direction or clear delineation of of the individual tasks that need to be done yeah, I agree. And the salt, because the salt user guide also has allowed us to test out things quickly and then see, is this useful? Is this going to be good to keep doing? And it, it's really kind of the lead project of how we've been testing out the uh, Firo theme, for example, the style guide stuff. How should, if you're representing a file path, how should that be used? Um, and that's where we're going to continue to roll out things like linters. 
And so, yeah, I think that's a very good point is uh, I think there should, it should be sort of a twofold thing. One, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting because I'm also, there's a lot of pro, there's a lot of fo growing focus on item. And um, a lot of my, my work is seeming to go in the direction of, of that unification and, and focus on the item universe over there, <laughs> item and pop. And then, and is somehow the publishing and search. But Salt User Guide, if we figure out, okay, this is how we'll publish it to docs.saltproject.io. This is how we'll make it accessible for people to find it. It pretty much would be the guinea pig for us to be able to go. Now we need to just replicate that out across all of our other projects. Um, so I like that idea. If we focus on Salt User Guide, Salt User Guide, and publishing, I can work with Bryce on the publishing piece, and the, um, and the, because uh, we can't do Algolia search until we actually have a decent amount of content on docs.saltproject.io for Algolia to start taking all the content in, um, or maybe we can do it early so that we can at least see what does it look like when you just have when you have the salt doc set and when you have the salt user guide doc set because then we'll be able to know then how we replicate that every time we add a new doc set. Um, yeah, I think that's a good, I think that's a good direction, Gary. Jim, you probably imagine you agree with that too. Um, yeah, it's, um, well, it's nice. it seems like this is kind of, yeah, a small enough test case, right? We can kind of do things that you want, you know, before rolling out four. So um, yeah, it sounds like this is kind of a big, yeah, a big deal. Well, yeah, I, sorry, go ahead. And what's the uh, what's the overall goal for the user guide? Is there like a deadline for this, or just you know, is it gonna be kind of an ongoing thing? Or? It's a it's gonna be completely ongoing because the yeah. eventual goal of the salt user guide is it's going to grow over time as we also pull content out of this main salt docs. Uh, you know, there's like a best practices document, for example, inside of the salt docs. That should be in the salt user guide because uh, if you, let's if we released a, a, a new version of that best practices guide today in the salt user docs you would now have a weird separation you'd have a weird problem again related to versioning where someone would go look in 3000 and those best practices docs now completely differ from when someone's on a different version branch when really that should be a static thing that whatever we're presenting is what people should be looking at regardless of what supported version of salt they're using so that's just one example so and so it will definitely be an ongoing thing is salt user guide will continuously be improved um because i even want to eventually add automated tests into the the salt user guide itself um because if we release a new version of salt i want it to run commands that we talk that we show people to use inside of the salt user guide because I mean, that's another way to catch potential problems introduced into the salt code base is if we have things testing on and working, let's say on 3003, and then 3004 comes out and then we run the same doc tests and they fail for whatever, for some reason, we've just caught something potentially. And, uh, and then we actually know our docs are accurate. <laughs> if they can run tests, if they can run the commands we're providing, uh, especially because Jim right now, for example, you're doing technical you're doing technical writing review, you're reviewing, right. but you wouldn't know then if those commands do what we're saying they do. Right. And um, without then going and manually setting up the prereqs to, to go and do that. But if we had something that was doing it for us and then we wanted to ever make adjustments to the commands, we would then have a verification that it really does what, what we're intending to do. Uh, and so that's just like another thing. That's why it's salt user guy is gonna be a continuous continuously improving docs. Like there isn't necessarily a deadline of all of them have to be perfect and done right now. It's okay, uh, at, least, at least coming in like miles out of shoot bar. It's like, oh, we want to have yeah, this functionality by this so we can say, at least have some goal rather than, oh, it'll happen sometime. Yep, yep, yeah, exact milestones. That's a great, that's a great approach is it's almost like if we can look at the project boards and issues and say, hey, we want to see if we can get this available and done by this point. That would be cool. Um, yeah. yeah. So otherwise, 
there's you know otherwise it just kind of goes on forever oh yeah and, and and also it would not we probably wouldn't put as much work in because all could be eventually be done you know? right. <laughs> i am yeah. gonna have to drop i'm gonna make you the host derek okay hopefully okay that's for the launch okay. codes so there you go and i did that didn't stop the recording so you should be okay Okay, and I now see extra buttons. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll see you guys next time. All right. See you, Sage. See you, Sage. Thanks. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, then I think we have a good idea of, of what, what next steps will be. I mean, and I'm going to continue to, we're going to bring up in the SALT open hour, we're going to continue to bring up Docs Jam planning. Uh, related to things like the table of contents and stuff too, but uh, I think that's going to be good. Salt project board. The problem with the salt project board, by the way, that salt that so Sage shared it in the Zoom chat, um, is that that's specifically to uh, the salt org on GitHub, and so it doesn't include things like the salt user guide. Um, but it's helpful for people who are working on ish, docs issues in the salt repo itself. Otherwise, you'd want to be going to the, and I'll, I'll just put a link to the salt user guide repo that we're talking about. Here's the salt user guide that we could then focus on more. Oh, and I'll also share a link to the salt install guide. which I don't think the install guide really has much in it at all at the moment. But the install guide as um, repo.saltproject.io is also an acrylamid generated site. And it's, it's uh, hosted in the same place actually where the packages are. And, um, and the keys uh, are uh, for, for verifying packages for uh, when for locally when they're verifying signatures and i we want them to be separate uh, so that the commands we would say run this to verify that you have the right fingerprint or whatever would be on the salt install guide and same with that whole policy we have way too many links to all sorts of different places you know i might as well share my screen again actually um, is the install guide parallel to the um is user guide this is something you're kind of you know taking out and yeah it's kind of it's the same thing where we're we're, we're taking some things out to um actually my screen's not sharing is it okay so when you're looking at the salt install guide, the goal is, you know how we have platform support and people are like, where do I find out supported operating systems? Where do I find out what the version life cycle is? Right now these exist all in like weird places. These specifically are on like the, the salt project IO site under like a specific location that is really hard to find unless you're like linked directly to them. And, um, I think they should belong in the install docs. If you're looking at, I'm installing this for Ubuntu 2004. Um, when you go to look at the installation docs, I think that same doc set should include, by the way, we support, we build packages specifically for these versions of Ubuntu. These ones are end of life. And so they're not supported or same with what versions of salt. And, um, uh, I kind of have just a lot of placeholders here, which is that, hey, take stuff from Salt Project IO for Ubuntu directions. Because when you go here, he here are the directions for the latest version and you, the ways you can pin it and these buttons on different. This is such a, biz, this is such a weird navigation experience for people. You, you, got, you go to your tab, you go to your version. Um, people get lost in this a lot. And we, we, we actually get quite a bit of feedback on this. 
And then you could browse and actually see what is the repo tree look like on the site. But um, this stuff, uh, which we, we'd rather like to centralize. Um, same with how there's these install docs. <laughs> And I have no idea how up to date these are. I mean, I've sometimes gone in to update some links, but if this is just repeating a lot of the same stuff, or if it's including information not included on salt project IO, these should be stripped out of the salt repo docs, the salt repo itself, and from repo.saltproject.io into this, which could then exist on docs.saltproject.io. Um, because right now Sage is also needing to support like Sage is having to support this PDF document somewhere, which if you, for, to actually show what I'm talking about, this is the. So yeah. If, moving that to a web page could be like task one. <laughs> yeah. That would be really nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm still yeah, sure Ken, you probably just run not. Yes, uh, you know, doing support. It's really awkward sending this PDF to users. You know. <laughs> yes, yeah. And um, it's not only that, but then people are like, well, wait, this, this doesn't include the versions of salt supported. So they're like, where do I go for that? And now, and for that, they have to go to look at a table on a WordPress site our salt project IO site and then find this life cycle when really this, this stuff, again, people shouldn't have to hunt to multiple different sites and pages to find what really is very related content. And um, this way we could at least, you know, here's could have the tape tables here, links here, whatever information we need um, so that that it just will make, it will make Sage's life easier. The goal is to make supports life easier. And the goal is to make any user of salt uh, their life easier. So, um, and also we have a QA team that when we're prepping for release, there's a lot of, okay, run. We need to test that our install directions all work. And the goal could be that our installation docs here that this repo can be pulled in as part of automated QA um, because it would be nice mm -hmm. to, right, can drop. So um, it would be nice to uh, have all of the code and steps in for installing salt packages in blocks that then QA could have in a pipeline. Because if we have a release come up, it's, uh, uh, we're kind of maybe staging it maybe we change some release directions like we had to recently actually uh there are some things going on with debian with um apt and how it supports uh, how it supports what was it the repo packages or something or or are they required uh, oh it's the, the the sign by where well apt is like deprecating a way of installing packages and so right now on certain versions of Ubuntu, you'll actually get warnings if you're installing using a deprecated approach. And it's eventually going to stop working. <laughs> and so we've updated our directions to be future, more future proof. Um, where if you were to look at, I mean, these directions said something a bit different before because we included an RPM. Sorry, not now the Red Hat. We included a package that had. Um, a whole lot of information included. Uh, man, I'm not really explaining that right. We did a lot of work with this. There's some open issues in SALT right now. If you were to go to, um, if you were to go and look at SALT, there's like an epic, I think, related to, to apt stuff that I think, there we go. So we have, that's all related to all these updates. Well, when you do all these updates, now you have to ensure your release pipeline automation is now following all the new directions you've done. What if you made a typo in your update to the directions? 
<laughs> well, now everybody who goes to try to install salt with updated directions all has a problem because you had a typo that's not tested in an automated fashion. Like we, we right now have had to manually do a lot of testing when we update our directions to ensure that it was correct. And um, that's really not good. <laughs> And so that, that would be another goal of why the install guide is being separate. Um, and so like Ken said, that needs to be a pretty high priority. And so I think the install guide and the user guide, those two side by side, they're, they're, this was mapped off of how the salt user guide's done. I took everything that we, that, that we benefited from learning through the creation of the salt user guide and uh, to make this guide, so it had all the same settings, all the same pre-commit automation, all the same GitLab CI automation, um, and, that, and all the previews, so when someone does a merge request, you can see a preview of this of the Sphinx-generated HTML site. Um, all of that is in place. I mean, the contributing guide is pretty much an almost direct du du duplication of what we have in the SALT user guide. So. Uh, that's why, that's why this exists and the purpose of what this is meant to do and how I try to put placeholders in to make it easy for anyone who wants to contribute that these are pretty much just like, Hey, if you can move what's over here into here, awesome. If you can move what's in this PDF into here, awesome. Right now it's a lot of it's time constraints. Like Elisa was going to do this, I think maybe a month ago, but again, I said it. Like I said before, Lisa's become a more of a internal uh, docs, right? Yeah. So I think what I'll do is I'll include these in the notes to the bit about salt install guide and its purpose. And um, yeah, I mean, does this sound like a good plan for like moving forward for docs working group? And for and is that? is get issues set up in these repos, get people assigned and start prioritizing um, how, and, and probably actually, I imagine having something like a roadmap page would be beneficial. Um, Gary. Probably some kind of, some kind of slightly bigger picture. You know, like a, yeah. Like some yeah, scaffolding I mean, we can hang concepts on and yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we've talked a, about a lot of big picture ideas but i think it's really time to like get down to the nuts and bolts and get get at least you know some stuff you know start getting things fleshed out right rather we built the scaffolding we need to start fleshing things out yeah and and we can iterate like i think we have to decide kind of on what's a minimal uh, minimum viable product right for like the salt yeah. user guide what's minimum viable, and then we can always iterate right as we add you know uh more stuff to the pipeline more automation but i think um we have, we can't, try, we can't always be trying to do 10 big things. We have to, right. you know, get one or two things done and yeah. then we can iterate from there. Yeah. And honestly, I think that the salt user guide, in my opinion, it's, it's, we've, we've created the MVP already. We just don't have it published because I feel like, I don't know if how it would be in your, I mean, maybe the table of contents, since we now have a theme that allows for you to actually have the old material theme, you couldn't, you couldn't have drop downs. You couldn't have nested table of contents in the left-hand menu, but now you can. And in salt user guide, if you look, it's, it's at quite a bit, it's quite a bit busy. <laughs> so, I mean, technically we could maybe change the table of contents, but I feel like content wise, what's there is minimal viable. It's met the minimal viable docs. Of course, we're reviewing it right now and improving it. But I think if someone was to go and look at it right now, it would be useful um, in that the improvements we're doing are right now a lot of like the wording of things, some of the aesthetics, maybe improvements to the style guide. Um, so I almost feel like if, if, if I could, I almost feel like if the automation was in place for publishing it, that then as we continue to, to make improvements, if, if those improvements just get auto published, um, does that seem like, uh, unless someone objects to the idea that I don't think we're there because of some, you know, reason, but um, I feel like we've met the minimal viable docs idea for the salt user guide. 
previous yeah years. i'm yeah i mean yeah obviously publishing is key right because it's not as consumable right now yeah. um i mean the only question is whether you know whether like for example we thought we had to have bail uh, in the pipeline or wow. if there's anything we thought we absolutely had to have or we thought would be immensely useful before we um before we uh um you know think like you're che like checking like ip addresses and style guide checks yeah. and all yeah. that stuff whether we you know th we thought we had to have that so that we could iterate more quickly um and and do we want to have that maybe, maybe that could be our next docs working group is get the hard requirements in is go going we want this stuff done and if there aren't issues for it in the salt user guide uh have the issues made and then that way um we could start assigning ourselves to the pieces of the tasks we want to have completed and um, start moving forward. What, what do you guys think about that idea? Yeah, it's some kind of little milestone. You know, it does not be- Yeah, let's start one. to, yeah, yeah, let's document, let's document hard requirements and milestones. Like, hey, when we finish these things, we've now achieved this milestone. Um, because like Gary said, we have a lot of the big picture, but we don't have the milestones that build up to it. Right. And uh, I think that would be a great one for, for the, the next working group. Okay, cool. Okay. okay. We're at the top of the hour here. Um, I'm going to finish my notes. I'm also going to go and see if, uh, my old notes from before, and I'm going to publish them to the Docs Hub. And um, uh, that if, if the clinic, the Docs Clinic next week, I'll figure out what I'm going to do for that one uh, when we get there. So, okay, cool. Thank you guys for... Um, uh, continuing to get to be involved in and attending all these. Uh, also, I've, I've got a couple issues in the docs hub you can close out. They've been like sitting, like they could have been closed for like, I'll, I'll send you the issue numbers, but yeah, there's a couple issues you literally just close. Okay. I Actually, that's an interesting point. At some point, I feel like the docs hub, a lot of its issues, I think almost we should close almost everything and issues that don't exist in the salt repo that should need to be migrated and just okay. not and because i think the initial purpose of docs hub for those issues it's it's lost that purpose so if uh, yeah cool all right um well have a good one guys and uh okay thank you and uh i'll see you next time